going on guys so we're back with another tutorial and this time i'm going to be showing you guys how i cut up a burst taper all right so as you can see this is a canvas we're working on today let's get it you always want to start off by spraying a decent amount of water that way the duct clips fit in nicely my model in this case had a swirl right in the center of his crown area which is ideal for most you always want to notice if this swirl is going clockwise or counterclockwise Using our skeleton, we will hit the baseline, but this time with a triangle. Remember, you don't want to be heavy on the hand using this first baseline because it will be harder to take off throughout the cut. Now we're going to shave off the small stubble that is underneath the triangle. Now with your main clipper, you will want to go all the way open, creating an oval shape on top of the triangle. Note that these tapers are supposed to look like they have a splattered effect. You can obviously not fit a whole entire blade inside of the taper, so you will have to use your corners. Now with the lever halfway open, you will want to hit the middle of this specific line. Remember that as you go up on the fade, you will want to open up the lever. Now using a one and a half, you will want to go up a full inch. So right underneath that guideline, you will want to go with your one open and then hit it right under using a half inch guideline. Remember to hit it as many times as you need to in order to get that blurry effect. We are still not done. We're going to keep fading and hitting up the little dark spots. Keep in mind that the other side is literally the same process. Now coming to the back, I did use his little peaks as an advantage and set my guideline right on top of it. Just like the first step, you do want to bald out the very bottom. Right after using a shaver, you want to open up the FX's and hit it with half an inch guideline. Make sure you close up the lever and then hit half of that guideline. As you go up, you want to keep on opening up the lever. With the one and a half, you do want to go up about a full inch again. Right above that one and a half, you will want to go with a number two open. In very few cases, I do flick out with a number two in order to get that full bulk effect right on top of it. Now with the half guard, you will want to go down to the very first line you see and then hit it with a half inch guideline. Right above that one, you will want to hit it with your one open. In this step, I did use my one and a half open in order to soften up some dark areas. Also remember to brush away all the excess hair. Now after doing these steps, the last step you want to do is hit the very bottom noticeable line with your lever open, no guard. And keep in mind using corners is always effective. If you come into contact with some dark spots, make sure you always open up the lever and then close it up as you go in. Using my skeleton effects, I did use my blade to my advantage. It is always best to have them zero gap for these tapers because they will leave that taper line real crisp. Now right after the trimmers, I did use a razor to 
get rid of all the little excess hair. Guys, I did go a little extra on you guys and decided to do a full design in the back of his head. At the end of every single haircut, I do come back and check every little detail. Now that I came to the front, he did want his widow's peak off, so I decided to do the guy line right on top of it. As you can see, the lineup really makes a fade pop. And from far away, you will be able to see that burst effect that I talked about earlier. I did use the thinning shears in order for the top to blend in the taper. The powder that you see me using is Sligerl and it makes it volumize so much more. YouTube, if you did enjoy our burst taper tutorial, make sure you give it a huge thumbs up, comment on what you want to see next, and make sure you are subscribed because we are coming out with more fire videos. That's it for us. Peace.